Hello and welcome to another episode of Life Off Screen. I'm Dan Rupel. This is my lovely wife, Peggy <laughs> Rupel. And, uh, you know, this is such a joy doing this show because we get to talk to dear friends. And, yeah. you, and you might get tired of us <laughs> saying that they're dear <laughs> friends, but they are. We just, that's one of the, the joys of, of working in this industry so long. We've met so many wonderful, wonderful people who have a passion for film but have a deep-rooted faith, and they're just wonderful to, to yes. hang with. Yes, they're all about transformative films, and um, because they're transformed people. Ah, good way to put it. They are. They're remarkable. That'd be a good slogan. <laughs> I, we should put that behind us. I, I like that. That's really, really good. So tell well, us about our guests. Well, they're they're certainly under that category of just dear friends who have such a passion for the industry, as well as um, a, a deep-rooted faith in Christ. And uh, you're going to hear about their journey. They, you're going to hear how they came to this a little bit later in life, in, mm -hmm. in their marriage uh, as well. And it's it's Gary and Hani Korngold. And Gary Korngold, who has spent most of his adult life uh, in the business world, but he comes from Hollywood royalty. Mm -hmm. His grandfather was Eric Korngold, who multi-Academy award-winning uh, a film composer, mm -hmm. and uh, he's he, he's iconic, and he's thought of as the most influential. He, he's thought of as the father of cinematic scoring. So uh, you're going to hear a little bit of uh, of that journey uh, uh, as he met Hani and, and started working in the film industry with her. Yeah, the integration is interesting to hear about, right? Yeah, it is. And uh, her as well. Uh, she came to it from a nonprofit background, and then she jumps in and she has her own production company. Um, and she's now doing films that are just major iconic directors as well as um, a different people starring in it. So just that, that sequential steps that she took along the way. And so she's also working with in Atlanta, helping to build the film industry there, a company called uh, Philanthro Films that's mm -hmm. a nonprofit in Georgia and, yeah. you know, bringing more people to Southern Georgia and letting them know because that's been a, the door of opportunity for her there as well. And what we've been involved in and love is her Story to Screen, screen Conference. She just launched it and it was a huge hit. And um, so she is a learner and an encourager and uh, just a pilgrim in this process. So yeah. we love them and we hope you enjoy it. Let's just jump into it. Gary and Hani, yes. welcome. <laughs> Thank, Thank you guys, you. this is so much fun. It is so good to see you, we miss you so much. And you guys, being quarantined, you must be going crazy because I don't know anybody who travels as much as you guys. Yeah, truly. You're always, you know, I'll text you and go, where are you? You're always <laughs> either at an airport or someplace. But how long have you been in the house? Uh, uh, gosh, two months. March since March 1st. Wow. Yeah, I think this, we were talking about this the other day. I think this is the longest in Gary's lifetime and probably more too that we have not been on a plane. Really? I believe it. Well, really? definitely in the last probably 40 years for sure. Well, yeah. Gary's got something like 5 million miles in the air, something crazy wow. like that. Not, Whoa. I'm a fraction of that. But <laughs> we definitely travel a lot. Yeah. So it is a little yeah. bit interesting to be. It, yes. It's a, it's an adjustment. But, you know, I, I like it because, you know, I can sit in my recliner. I put my tray table down and then Hani brings me my, uh, you know, my <laughs> there you go. beverage service and my meal. Yeah. yeah. I go right at home. Oh, yeah. and, there you and, go. And, and, uh, this is not a it, joke. This is, this is true. <laughs> I'm liking this, you know, and I, end I, of the, I'm like, what did you do when I, when, you know, what do you do during the day in your office? How do you feed yourself? Do you starve? <laughs> yeah. Are you getting tired of peanut packets and, and all the that? Pretzels. Yeah. <laughs> the pretzels. Uh, at the end of the day, do you, does Hani come out and you say, uh, you got to put your tray up, we're ready for landing? Yeah. yeah. But she yeah. has to give me a little hot towel first. Oh, there you That's go. Right. There you That's go. Right. There you go. Well, we find your story uh, just fascinating, um, really unique, because you've been married for 16 years now, right? Right. Yeah. But you really came together different stages of life and different stages in your career. And um, Honey, you were working in the nonprofit space, and then you make this transition over um, yeah. to media. And Gary, you were in the business world. So how did you meet? 
Well, we met through a friend, actually. A mutual friend. A mutual yeah. friend. Yeah. yeah. And, and our friend Holly. Holly. Yes. And yes, we mutual friend. Holly, right? Both being single at the same time. And and we were like a couple of, you know, high school girls, you know. So anybody interesting in your life? Have you met <laughs> anyone interesting? She and you know, we would kind of exchange. She's like, Well, yeah, there's this nice guy, Gary, but She'll yeah. probably kill me for saying this, but she's like, he's too old for me. <laughs> but we're this, almost the same age, a couple of years apart. Yeah. But I, said, I just think he's a, he's a really great guy. And I said, I'd love to get to know him a little bit more. And yeah. we, um, we decided to, to meet. In fact, I sort of initiated and I said, hey, I'm going to watch hockey playoffs at this local little place down in Huntington Beach. And if you want to come, you're more than welcome, but it's hockey playoffs, so this is serious. Yeah. But he showed up. There you go. Was, like you, you gotta, love a girl, gotta love a girl who loves hockey. I guess you <laughs> oh do. Oh my goodness, I guess yes. you do, yeah. Now, now Bucket list. <laughs> by your own admission, you were a little later in life. Yes. Um, you know, at that stage in your life, you're a little bit more set in your daily rhythms and mm -hmm. you also have fi family dynamics going into mm -hmm. it. Uh, were, was it a pretty harmonious emerging of the rivers or was it <laughs> a, a, a lot of torrents? Yeah. <laughs> it was actually surprisingly smooth. Really? Mm -hmm. I, I have two grown kids, so, you know, you always wonder, well, how's that going to work out as things get more serious? Mm -hmm. But um, in, in this case, they both love honey. You know, they, yeah. they view mm -hmm. her as kind of yeah, their mom now, and um, so it, it, that was easy. That was the easy part. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're just amazing. They just, they're, you know, not having had children of my own, I couldn't have asked for two more amazing uh -huh. young people. So it's just been yeah. really, it's been yes, really yes. neat. I love it. That's great. Yeah. great. So when you were in the nonprofit space, so then, so now you got a new, like I said, new career, uh, a new marriage, new family, um, new family, all this, yeah. all this newness. And then yeah. how, how did you make that transition over to what, to the, your first steps into media? Well, it was kind of interesting. I, I look back on, um, I had spent, oh gosh, almost 10 years with a ministry called Campus Crusade for Christ. I was the director mm -hmm. of their conference ministry. Mm -hmm. So I was used to doing large events and theater and, you know, mm -hmm. handling big groups of a thousand at a time for conferences and concerts. And, wow. and um, when I left Crusade, um, it was about the time, just a little bit later after, you know, before Gary and I had met. And I thought, you know what, how cool would it be to do what I had done in a conference environment, but do it around the world. And mm. instead of doing it in a, you know, conference center kind of environment, and Gary loves to travel. Mm -hmm. He's been to more countries than I can even, I mean, I don't know a how few. many. He's been, a few. he's been everywhere. <laughs> so we both had this, you know, he had this great love for travel and, and I had, you know, spent so much time working, hadn't had a lot of time to travel. So we started to travel a little bit and, and Gary said, gosh, wouldn't it be really cool to be like a travel critic or a travel um, oh, yes. writer? You know, that's a Rick Steve's yeah. job. I mean, it's yeah. like. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I thought, that's really cool. Maybe we can kind of take your knowledge of travel and what you know around the world and, and my desire to, to kind of take people to all these places where they can get outside of their comfort zone and God can meet them. Maybe mm -hmm. we can, you know, do something there together. And that's when we started um, a travel company. Right. And we yeah. started doing what I was doing in, in sort of a faith-based conference environment and doing it all over the world. So we take wow. a thousand people to the Bahamas and do like a, a missions you know, cruise, or we'll go to, you know, Jordan or Turkey or Israel. Mm -hmm. And then we started um, getting requests like, well, hey, that's a really neat concept. Why don't you start, you ever thought about doing a television show? Yeah. Yes. And I, and yeah, yes. I was talking about it and I'm like, well, how hard can this be? I've done right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. Be, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> yeah. You are a go for it girl. You are. I just love it. It's, you know, a, it's a good thing we don't know what we don't know. And I would, yeah. I, I would just add an interesting little twist to what Hani was saying is that concept literally happened 
on our honeymoon. It did. It, we were really. Two, we were. I don't know. It was we Mary's Boone. Mary's Boone in St. Martin, and we were waiting to go on our cruise that we were going to do for our honeymoon, and we were mm -hmm. there the day before, and we were just hanging out, sitting by the pool, and whatever, and you know, she had left her job, and she was like, well, what am I going to do now that, you know, I've left my job, and I said, well, you don't really need to work, so do something you want to do. And that's when this whole thing started to unfold. When the 747 came <laughs> flying over the pool. And Mary, really, <laughs> that's Mary's a sign. Literally sits on the runway of the St. Martin Airport. So you can watch these giant airplanes touch down. Yeah. While you're, uh, you know, sunning yourself on the pool. You know? well, yeah. well, my yeah. name, Gary's like, I need to be able to tell people about stuff like this. I didn't see yeah. this in TripAdvisor or whatever. Yeah. We're like, hey, yes. we should, let's, you know. That's how it started. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. when did it develop into a, um, you started filming it? I mean, this went yeah. on for eight years. Yeah. In 158 countries. Yeah, exactly. I mean, wow. this wasn't just a, oh, let's that you, I mean, you really, no. come on kids, let's put on a show. <laughs> we had, we had, um, we had first started doing a radio program before that. So we started getting an idea for some of the destinations and the kinds of, we were advertiser supported. So some of the advertisers that would support us and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, and we just started putting destinations mm -hmm. on the docket and they were based on where our advertisers would support us. So let's see, yeah. all right, who's stepping <laughs> today? Turkish Air, right. going to Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Follow the money. <laughs> Yeah, well, so yeah, seeds, seeds of that producer, right? Yeah, yeah. to come. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Now, 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 you guys are shifting into media, and we'll get into it because you've gone much, much further in the last uh, years since I've known mm -hmm. you. Um, but Gary, you're no novice. Even though you spent most of your adult life in uh, in the business world. Yeah. It's in your DNA. Your grandfather, Eric Kerngold, is a Hollywood, he's Hollywood legend, yeah. royalty. He's thought of as the father of, of, of film or, uh, scoring. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to add a little note. I don't want to geek out too much on, uh, on his, his credits. <laughs> but I, my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is, you, is your grandfather, yeah. um, is... What made him so unique and, and uh, influential is prior to him, particularly with Robin Hood, it would just be background music in a movie. Right. But he comes along and he's suddenly giving every character a theme. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's giving every, every scene an emotion. So he's really furthering the story through the scoring. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of, you know, you think of Hans Zimmer or you think of, um, uh, John Williams, who were greatly influenced by Eric Korngold. Mm -hmm. And you think of this concept of giving every character theme music in Darth Vader. Yeah. It's like, he <laughs> wa you know, you hear the music and you know Darth Vader's coming in, but was, that was kicked off, initiated by Eric Korngold. And I was reading up and just realizing, truly, John Williams, I mean, he credits his career to your grandpa. I mean, this has so influenced him. So there, these guys are all going. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, if, you, if you are an aficionado of mm. film music and you listen to the various scores that are, you know, created by these really super talented people like John Williams or Hans Zimmer or Danny Elfman even yeah. mm -hmm. you know, later mm -hmm. years. Yeah. They all kind of followed, um, and not to get too techy and, and geeky on that, but um, you know, in classical music, they have uh, a lot of uh, concepts called light motifs, so that each, mm -hmm. like you had pointed out, each character has yes. their theme, so that you kind yes. of know when that character is coming back into the story, all of a sudden that particular yes. theme comes into play and because my grandfather was first and foremost a, a classical composer and he was probably the foremost um, composer in the 20th century in Europe mm -hmm. he was able to use that skill set 
to create that that whole movement in film music. Yeah, and that's how that's how Robin Hood came because originally when they offered him the movie, you know, he's like he watched some of the rushes of the of the film. <laughs> and he's like, mm, I don't think so. This isn't, you know, I, I, I don't compose for action movies, was, yeah. his, was his remark. And then, of course, when Hitler marched into Austria, then he had a change of heart and said, well, maybe, maybe I will do this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll, I'll go lowbrow and, and go into the movies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you're, Errol Flynn's like a newcomer in that movie, yeah. right? So it's not like he's yeah. a noted actor, too. So he's oh yeah, no, that was a, he was. I think my grandfather ultimately did almost all of Errol Flynn's movies, as well, yeah. especially the earlier ones, mm -hmm. um, The Seahawk. He did Robin Hood, yeah. Elizabeth, and all all the movies that Errol Flynn did with you know that uh, huge cast of actors that Warner Brothers had. I mean, you know, he worked exclusively for Warners. His yeah. house was literally three blocks from Warner, Bro Warner Brothers. Yeah. So he, he was able to just walk to work every day. It was, mm -hmm. it, was a pretty, it was a pretty good life that he had at that particular mm -hmm. point in time. Yeah. He, was, he only would do two or three movies a year, period. Yeah. Wow. He just said, I'm not doing more than that. Mm -hmm. And that was back when everything was kind of, you know, uh, an assembly line. They pumped yeah, up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, truly. Yeah. It, it was, yeah. He, had a, he had a unique arrangement with them. And uh, because he was out. so revered as a classical composer, he was able to cut deals that nobody else. Oh, yeah. And nobody else could cut oh, deals. Yeah. What I love about you, Han, is that you have, you are like this consummate learner. I mean, there was a time I think there was not a conference that somehow you weren't at. I mean, yeah. you could, you were just like you said, flying everywhere. But um, well, let me interrupt I, you for. I loved that. I I met you at a conference. Oh, do, do you remember the conference? We met. I'm gonna guess we met about 15 years ago, and I was speaking at a conference in LA. Um, forgot the name of the conference. Uh, my my friend mm -hmm. Phil Cook was also speaking, and we had lunch. And you came over and oh, introduced exactly yourself. What it was it was Visual Story Network. Visual Story Network. And I'm That's on what it was. Now. <laughs> oh, you are. The Tabers. The Tabers. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> do, do you recall the year? It seems to me it was like the it mid two thousand. It was a long time ago. In fact, Clyde Tabor, who runs Visual Story Network, he and I were trying to think about how long ago that was, and I uh, I don't know. It's got to mm. be. Yeah. At least, it's got to be at least. You were just a little girl. 14, yeah. or, 14 or 15 years ago. Yeah, so you guys were newlyweds when we met you. Yeah. 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 There you go. Well, there's a lot of wisdom to be gleaned. And I think yeah. if there's a humility that comes when you say, you know what, I just... I, I don't know it all. I don't know it all. I'm a constant learner. And it's not just learning. You're connecting with people. You're building relationships. I love that about you. You're a seeker. You're a knocker. I'm a big believer in demystifying processes. So... Like, for instance, years ago, the very first time we went to Sundance, the thing that drove me was, I want to demystify this festival process. How does it work? How does it function? Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. thing with Cannes, same thing with any of the things that we get in, involved in is like, I want to demystify it. Because once you do that, and once mm -hmm. you break it down and understand how it works, it's no longer daunting. And then you can take what's useful out of those things and mm -hmm. get rid of the rest and it's mm -hmm. you can move on to the next thing because yeah. you can, you've checked that off the box and you know how it's going to be helpful yeah and you know especially if if any young people are watching this this interview and this conversation um this industry that we're in changes quicker than maybe any industry there is. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's changing constantly. You, you can, you, you kind of think you figured out the combination <laughs> and then it changes, you know, and the platforms change and the, the, you know, mm -hmm. audiences, uh, you know, uh, things they enjoy changes. Uh, and now everything's changing, but um, that's what, one thing that is so important that you're always learning, always learning. And that's one thing we appreciate appreciate about you most okay. of the time we see you guys is at a conference or a film festival you you mentioned gary sundance we go to every year yeah we we have our thai food on main street <laughs> every main. single year we love it <laughs> yeah and now um we love the fact that it has led and fed into um now you are um 
a producer. You've got multiple projects in development, right? Uh, you are um, working with, was it an initiative within Georgia? Oh, yeah. Tell us about the initiative, initiative in Georgia to bring uh, more production to South Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, you know, for us, we've had more forward motion on our projects since we have moved our production offices out of L.A., mm. which is crazy. Um, yeah. But I think for us, we found that most of the people that are investors in our projects, particularly development investors, the kinds of stories that we tell, the true story, inspiration um, kind of projects, our investors were coming from the Southeast mm -hmm. because that's, you know, those are the kinds of projects they want to support. Um, I don't know that we had any investors for any of our projects that came out of Southern California. Mm. Mm, not I that I can think of. Do, do you I mean, think you've got too so much competition? In, yeah, in because California. that's what I was going to ask. There's a lot of competition, and the kinds of projects that we do are not usually the kinds of things that that are getting. You know, there's there's not a lot of it getting made there, and the competition is fierce for the dollars that are there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so a couple of things led us to Georgia. One, that was the first thing. You know, just having that that community, that support base financially, because we're independent filmmakers and mm -hmm. we've got to go out there and generate our own, you know, everything we do. Um, but the second thing was, I just feel, you know, that Georgia is a place to be for the kinds of stories that we tell, not just from the money side of things, but just from the value side. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. so much going on in Georgia right now. Let's talk about the kinds of stories you, you, you want to tell. How does your faith inform uh, your either your approach to a project or a project that you that connects with you that you want to tell. Well, I think it's it's kind of a twofold process. I mean, I I'm usually the one that's out there scouting for stories, and then it, it, we're, we're kind of like the hunter gatherer here, but in the reverse with story. So I'll kind of find things that you know maybe something we've read, maybe a book, maybe something in the news. I gravitate to true stories because they're the ones that inspire me the most. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. If he can do it or she can do it, imagine maybe I could too. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. there's something about that. And mm -hmm. so then I'll bring the story back to Gary and I'll know that he's going to vet pretty hard. He's going to, he's yeah. going to be the one that says, okay, let's think about this. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about who's going to go see that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Important question. Audience, audience. Important. <laughs> You know, and he'll, he's the one that'll do the deep dive into the comps. And, you know, when it comes time to reading any source material, like books or whatever, he'll dig into that stuff. And if there's any holes, he's going to bring it up. I love yeah. that, the balance of the strengths and weaknesses and, I mean, and coming all together. We've had a couple, we mostly get involved in projects at the very beginning of the development. Yes. Acquiring the IP, everything. But we've been involved in a few projects that we've come on late stage after they've already finished you know, uh, most of the production, maybe they're in post, will come on and will help. And, and sometimes it's hard in that way because you don't really have the ability to influence the project um, mm -hmm. from a marketing standpoint too, because things that you do early on in production and your choices with your script can affect. Yeah, you're, you're playing, you you're are. playing a, a repairman instead yeah, of a, yeah. uh, and sometimes a, a builder. <laughs> you can't yeah. do that stuff. And we've had a couple of those. So we, we've learned that that's not really our thing. Um, yeah. You know, we really like to get involved, uh, you know, in, in the early in the early stages because we can choose those projects that speak to us, speak to our heart, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. do the things that we feel called to and the stories that we think will move the needle in society, you know, things that, yes. that are going to make a difference because, I mean, now more than ever, people are hungry. Yes. Stories yes. of hope and yes. stories of inspiration and stories that help them get to tomorrow where they can go, you know what? It's going to be okay. You have a, a good handle too mm -hmm. on the type of project. This is your project. That isn't our project, yeah, right. you know? Well, Hey, I mean, really, is that not um, shifting gears? Truly life off screen. Is that not how life is? I mean, you, yeah. Yeah. you come to life and you say these as, as a couple, uh -huh. These are our non-negotiables. These are our values. This right. is who we are. This is the litmus by which we're going to live our life. So, I mean, our, what about for you guys, just as a couple, um, and how you navigate this industry, what have been those signposts that you said, 
this is who we are. This is our coat of arms. I think it's kind of interesting because, you know, as, you know, approaching this industry later, later in life for me and Gary having grown up in it and actually, you know, his father was on the producing side, on the music producing side Mm -hmm. as well and said, Hey, come on, Gary, let's, you know, come, come work in the, in the family business. Yeah. Gary was like, "Mm -hmm." no. (laughs) So, I saw all the bad sides of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. oh, so, no, I, no, this isn't for me. I'll, I'll go my own way. <laughs> so, so he's kind of coming at it at a, a little different place than, than I am. But we're, we're such a um, kind of a unicorn in, in this business, especially working at it together, mm-hmm. that we haven't had – we don't have the, the, the time or the luxury – to make bad choices or to mm, um, good point. You know, take things on because, hey, we're in our 30s. Let's give this a shot. You know, no, everything that we do and everything that we choose to do in this business has got to be intentional. It's got to be totally right down the, the pipeline with the things that are important to us and the things that we're really excited about mm-hmm. because we're not spring chickens. <laughs> you know? So you speak for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> offensive, honey. Uh, you know, but, but I want to go back to what Gary said. You 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 saw the dark side growing oh, yeah. up of the business. Mm-hmm. And now honey, you weren't as exposed to the industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you have a little bit of a romantic view of the industry and then Gary gave you a reality check or how yeah. did that work? I think, you know, it's, it's probably an unfortunate comparison, but having spent time in ministry and I can remember like hiring people when I was in ministry that would work for me and they'd be all like doughy eyed and wow, isn't it amazing? You get to work for ministry and wow, you know, it must be so wonderful. Oh, you must sing Kumbaya every day, you know. Well, we do. That's how we start our day. (laughs) But that was always like, um, you know, a talk that I had to give them. Okay, let's, let's talk about this. Yes, it's ministry, but you know, it functions this way and this is the real world and Mm -hmm. it's not all, you know, beautiful and wonderful. And so I think just having a little bit of um, knowledge from where Gary came from and then also coming out of ministry, having that realization that things are not what they appear, you know, and I I guess with this whole thing, even though it's creative, I've always approached it with a business mindset as well. Mm -hmm. And I never really got caught up in the Oh wow, this is going to be so cool. I will say there was there was one moment in the last 14 or 15 years that I can go, "Oh yeah, that was kind of cool." Cuz it's one of those moments where you kind of, you know, get excited about the first time you see your yourself on your own television show on television. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. kind of a fun strange moment and yeah. I remember exactly where I was standing. I was standing in our bedroom and it came I think we were on um Family Net or inspiration network or a couple of those and I remember turning it on and I remember turning the tv on in our bedroom and I'm like that's me (laughs) (laughs) you know and then after the you know 50 70 100 times you know you Mm -hmm. don't but that first moment that was probably Mm -hmm. the 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 one sort of hey this is cool moment that I can Mm -hmm. really remember um you know in that whole process but the second cool really cool moment and you were with me was when we got to meet Bruce Beresford, who's our writer director for one of our films in London and sitting down with him going, wow. okay, here's a guy I've loved yeah. since forever, driving Miss Daisy, Tender Mercies, and we're sitting across the table and he's saying yes to writing and directing our project. Oh, wow. that was just God like, moment. And, yeah. and I think even the better part is he was all fanboy over my grandfather because <laughs> he is a huge Corngold fan. Yeah. yeah. He directed one of my grandfather's operas when it premiered at the Sydney Opera House. Oh, did he? So, I didn't know oh, that. Yeah. So yeah. he's Oh he's my goodness. Fan. Full circle. Wow. Yeah. But, well, you bring up a good, very good point then because here this this is one of those remarkable career moments you had, but 
you can speak to the fact that as a producer, getting anything made is such a Herculean task. So my, and it's really difficult. So what has kept you going and kept you engaged and not giving up because there are, it, it takes so long and you have to have such patience. You have to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And then realize it isn't a train coming toward you. <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, from my perspective, having been in the business world, I mean, I've, I've ridden the highs and the lows so many times that I don't let things bother me too much. You know, mm-hmm. I, I know equilibrium tends to be... Mm a constant in life eventually. Mm-hmm. So I, I always look at mm-hmm. it from that perspective. Yeah. Me, and not so much. She, she gets <laughs> a little bit more agitated when things aren't going well. And it, yeah. it, it's frustrating, as you know, right now with this mm-hmm. industry, yeah. it's literally ground to a halt. And, yeah. and yes. we were just, we were just picking up steam on two or three. You know, we had one that we were, we're, that's in production mm-hmm. and it, fortunately it's an animated film so they can Keep still move on, you know, yes. still work. work. Mm-hmm. But you know, one of our big films, we were like this close to getting ready to pull the trigger and yes. then boom, mm-hmm. pandemic and everything stopped, ground to a halt. And, yeah. uh, you it's, know, we know friends, you know, our friend Darren who works with yeah. us, he was already on set when they shut it down. Mm, that's so hard. He was He's like, back now. He's back. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, that's the kind of it, craziness. The thing that's so, that's, that's probably the most frustrating about, about this business for me is that you have to decipher when yes really means yes. Yeah. Mm. One, of, one of the things that I say all the time, and I don't even remember where I picked it up, but it's so true. Beware when you walk out of a meeting and people are high-fiving. Yeah. <laughs> because that means bad things. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's like that that level of hey, this is great. Let's we're definitely going to do this. Let's go. Yay, you know. Yeah. Yes. That's not that's just not how it works, you know. Yeah. And it's it's just a a a long deciphering of which yes is the right yes and yes. which yes fizzles out into nothing and which agreements you think are going to sign never do and which money is supposed to show up in the bank and never does, you know. But it's it's the yeses that that are actually harder to decipher because you get more yeses than you get more noes. Does that make any sense? Yes, mm-hmm. yes. No, I do. People so say, they want to they want to they want to say yes. You know, mm-hmm. they they tell you they they tickle your ears with oh love that project. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, I think this will fit here, here, and here. <laughs> you know, and so you're just you're always kind of wading through, and you become this this sort of decipher of what's real and what's not. Mm -hmm. So how does your, um, how does your faith inform that? I mean, how does that navigate you through those processes? How does your relationship ground you when you, you know, because it, it, sometimes it can feel like the two of you against the world or, or, you know, so where does, where does faith in your relationship? I, I would say the, I mean, obviously, there's a basis for everything in your faith, but purely from the business movie side of things, Mm -hmm. I kind of take, and it's probably the wrong word, but I I take a fatalistic kind of point of view with it, where (laughs) is if it happens, then that's what God meant for it to be mm-hmm. if it doesn't then there's a reason why mm-hmm. oh, man. i like to think that there's something better behind it yeah. that's mm-hmm. going to come up truly yeah. just it's that god's it's, provision for opening the door for that one so yeah. there's there's something that i that i think about often and it's and i again i don't remember where i picked it up but it's a line that goes something like it's not rejection it's protection Mm-hmm. So oh, if good. The project is being rejected. It's not that you're being rejected. It's that God's protecting you for something better, you know, yeah. protecting yes. you from something that Absolutely. could be horrible. And that plays out in our lives over and over. It happens a lot. It yeah. happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. In, in this like, indi- oh, in, I dodged a bullet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes, truly, but, but truly. In this industry and also in life, mm-hmm. you know, God, 
he brings great purpose to the difficulties we walk through. Mm -hmm. And every time you hear a no, it can be <sighs> devastating, you know, <laughs> especially if you, you were, all your chips were in, you know, you were really <laughs> yeah. in and you get that no. But how often do you see that, yeah, that project fell through, but out of that, I met so-and-so, and they introduced me to so-and-so, and this connected, mm -hmm. and it's like, wow, had, had I never gone down that road that was a dead end, I would never, never have met or done this that yeah. was, you know, the, the, one, yeah. the real, you know, gem in, in my resume. All the time, all the time, and that it's just, lot. you know, that, that, that's, that's part of what you hold on to, knowing that mm -hmm. that's a truth. That yeah. is a constant truth in everything that we yeah. do. So, mm -hmm. well, what? One last question. Mm. Okay, you've been married 16 years. You you had the shifts. We've talked all about that. Looking back, what would you tell yourselves 16 years ago? As you were getting thinking about getting married, you were starting the journey to into media. What have you learned over these 16 years that you would tell? Yourself there. There's one thing that I would that I would definitely say. Go ahead. Listen to Gary more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, I, just, I mean, there we, you know, there's we joke about it sometimes, but because um, I'm I'm a little strong-willed. No, a little bit. not you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And, and you know, there's so many times where he'll say, "You know what? Why don't you just try X, Y, and Z." Yes. Well, you know, no, I think maybe I could do it this way or I could do it that way. And he'll just patiently sit by and then come full circle. And if I just would have done that, I could have saved myself so much time and <laughs> so much grief and so much stress. Um, because, you know, he's, he's, he's got some wisdom that, that I'm lacking. So I, I, I definitely would listen more <laughs> yeah. to what he was saying. Yeah. Well, oh dear. you know, um, Peggy and I, one of our real joys is we have had the pleasure of having a front row seat in your guys' lives, your, your pursuits, the projects, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, and it has been such a joy. We have so much love for you guys. Yes. And we hold our friendship with such value. And we have such admiration for you. Mm -hmm. You never say die. Uh, we've been there with you in the trenches when you got the call that, you know, it's not going to happen, yeah. and, but, but you guys have persevered with great grace and faith and yes. endurance and tenacity and perseverance. And, and I, I, I love, um, I've told you this before, honey, but, uh, you're one of those rare people. And so are you, Gary, that you, you're, you're champions. You, you come alongside and isn't that the role of the producer that sees a, finds a story worth telling yeah. and um and then you champion it when few know about it and you ha and you sustain that and you keep it up so um that's not just what you do with projects that's what you do with friendships yes. and we have been the benefactors of that so we bless you both we Thank love you. having you guys as friends and like at Sundance, it's always our highlight. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that I think I've told you guys this before, but, you know, for us newlyweds compared to you guys, you know, it's <laughs> nice to have friends like you that show us what good looks like. Oh, ah, you're sweet. I love so, you. Yeah. Well, we love you guys. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. It's us. Been the it's best. been great. Yes. It was fun. It I was can't fun. wait till we can share a meal. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Sooner than later. Soon, I hope. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. All right. Bye. 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 Thank you for joining us for Life Off Screen with Dan and Peggy Ruppel. Life Off Screen is produced by Master Media International. Our technical director is Jason Rugg. Please subscribe to the Life Off Screen YouTube channel or subscribe to the Life Off Screen podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love to hear from you. You can leave your comments in the comment section. And to find out more about Master Media, go to mastermedia.com. Thanks again for joining us. Hope to see you next time.